Good evening, everyone. Thank you for coming this evening. We are at our retreats, and the main theme of our retreats is Lord, walk a mile in my shoes. But the subtitle is Lord, help us to get out of our life deserts. Walk a mile in my shoes and take me out of my life deserts. Let's at the beginning pray so we can get into this talk this evening and reflect a little bit and then we will proceed with our main theme today. Lord, walk a mile in my shoes. Come in, Lord. Please teach me how to love. Teach me how to feed others. Give them shelter. Give them my presence. Make me healthy food for others. Jesus, come into my stiff, motionless, dead, and paralyzed life. Come into my desert. You are the only one who has the power to restore my life, revive my life. So, do it. Revive my faith with the deeds of love. Amen. The best way and tested way to get out of life deserts is love. <coughs> the best way and tested way of getting out of our life deserts is love. This is the number one way to get out from the desert. So how to love so that your marriage and your family can exist in happiness and harmony? Have to, how to love someone else so that they always feel truly loved, important and safe? How to love in the moments of crisis, fatigue, disappointment, illness or old age. How to love one particular person throughout your whole life? Is it possible in the 21st century? What does conjugal love look like after 20 or 30 years of living together? How to love someone more and more with every new wrinkle on their face? How to love when the other person is slower, weaker, more irritable and difficult every day? How to love a difficult child who screams, spits or maybe steals? How to take care of your mutual love when despite numerous efforts, you can't have children. How to love when you are single, when you are priest, nun, widow or widower? How to make your love for people and for God exceptional, unique, conscious? Is it possible? Is it possible for a person to love in an unusual way, both intense and long-lasting? Well, it is possible. It is possible. And the cross proves that. The one who has undergone terrible torment, 
died a shameful death on the cross, and then resurrected. He wants to tell us tonight, you can love the way I do. You can love, no matter where you are in your life, you can love. It doesn't matter how old are you, whether you are a wife, a husband, or live alone. You can love. It doesn't matter if you have known your spouse for 30 or 40 years, you love, your love for them can be special. This is called the art of love. We'll be talking about it today, not about some shallow feeling, something you try out about some pseudo-love. All the feelings, for instance, are very important in your love. I am talking about the art of true, powerful love. When it comes to love, never say yes to mediocrity. You either climb the highest mountains, the Himalayas, or you fall off the rocks into the abyss and ruin your life. Love is about Himalayas. You can learn how to love. And this is the first piece of good news. Each one of us here can learn how to love. One way to learn, it is to do a course. Yes, there are many courses on this topic these days. In Poland, for example, you can attend the Master Academy of Love. So people go there and they learn how to love. Of course, we can also learn how to live and love in the family, in a marriage, by gaining everyday experience. We can do, learn love through everyday experience also. But there comes a moment in our life, especially when we already have different experiences in love, positive, good, but also difficult, that you start to think, no, life itself will not teach me love. That's not enough. That's too flimsy. I walk the beaten paths. I make the same mistakes. I don't grow in love. I need something more. I need a better school, an ideal, a master in love who will teach me something unusual about love. Jesus Christ is the master of love and the Eucharist is one of the best schools. The Eucharist shows us certain elements that we can transfer to the way we love to our everyday life. The scheme and the dynamics of the Eucharist and of love are the same. In other words, the recipe for love is hidden in the Eucharist. It's hidden. We have to dig it up. I am going to show you a few elements of the Eucharist that should be introduced into our daily relationships, into the way we love. Gratitude. Eucharist first element is gratitude. This is what Eucharist means. Ephkaristo in Greek means thanksgiving. Gratitude is one of the commandments of love. I love you is one thing, but when I say these words, I also say to you, I am grateful for you. I am grateful to God for you. I am grateful that he gave 
you to me, that he shared you with me. I am grateful for being able to live under one roof with his beautiful creature, his piece of work, masterpiece. Even if sometimes that creature is getting on my nerves. <laughs> or when I show love in my deeds, husbands and fathers often behave like that, I actually show my gratitude for my wife, my children, my home, my work. I am grateful for you, for what you do and what you don't do. We have to know that each one of us has, has different vocabulary of love. And it's very important to learn what is your vocabulary of love. Vocabulary means not only words, but as well behavior, deeds. Some people, for instance, they don't show feelings, but they do deeds. So look deeper in their language of love, how they love you, what they do, how they behave, what they say, and find love, specific way of love for that or the other person. When it comes to gratitude, there is one more important thing. Not all of us have love in our lives. Maybe we would like that a lot, but maybe some of us are going through a difficult heartbreak, a disappointment with a relationship, or with another person, or maybe with people in general. We will be talking about these experiences during our meetings, but let me tell you now, if you are experiencing a beautiful love at this moment, be thankful. Say thank you. Don't wave it aside. Don't wave it aside. Be thankful. Show your thankfulness. Love is something you should celebrate every day. It is the most important experience of all. Whether you are a wife, a husband, a fiancé, a single person, or a nun, a priest. Or maybe your love isn't reciprocated, but you do feel love. Be thankful for your love. This is what we learn from the Eucharist. Gratitude. It changes people. Gratitude changes people's hearts. Be thankful for tiniest signs of love in your life. It doesn't mean you have to build your husband a private altar, for instance, at home and talk about him constantly. Call him several times a day. No, absolutely not. Being grateful for your husband, for your friend, is one thing, a very important thing. But it, it is even more important to be thankful for love in general. Be thankful for love in general. The love you experience in your life. There are so many people, too many in fact, who don't know this luxury. Luxury of love. So be thankful, be grateful for the smallest things and signs of love in your life. Sometimes it isn't their own fault that they don't experience love because they are in a constant search for a new love. But that's a different topic. We don't, why don't I feel these things? Why don't I experience love in my life? 
gratitude. Very important in life and love. Since we are talking about the Himalayas of love, we must also say that it is worth giving thanks to God for the difficulties we experience in love. Don't waste difficulties in your love, in experiencing love in your life. Difficulties are an element of our relationships. They are ours, we all share them. They are part of the history of our love. Look at God, at God's people. Difficulties are the nature of gaining love, learning love, being more and more better in loving people. Our relationship, they are part of our experience, difficulties. Let's be thankful for them too. Because sometimes difficulties put us higher, on a higher level in our relationships with people. So let's be thankful for them too, because we don't know where they will lead us tomorrow. A kiss and an apology, or introductory rites during Mass. In the first part of the Eucharist, the priest kisses the altar. There are two kisses of the altar during the Mass. One is, one is at the beginning and one is at the end. We can put this into relationship. One is in the morning, one is in the evening, closing the day. Here is another lesson in the school of love, or the Eucharist, a kiss. We don't need to convince anyone that kissing is a very important element of love, especially in marriage. But it is also a greeting, a goodbye, we share with friends and acquaintances. And we can see it here, after Mass, before Mass. We meet people. This part of the Eucharist also includes the act of penance. At the beginning of each ma Mass, we have the act of penance. Examination of conscience and an apology to God. Examination of conscience, an extremely important part of mastering your love. Every day, I ask myself, how did I love today? Did I do everything to make the other person feel loved and cherished? How did I love people at work? Did I hurt anyone? And so on. The examination of conscience through the perspective of love. Whenever you do the examination of conscience, you can do it only in reference to God's love. When you think about your sins, never do it without referring it to the love of God. You can think about sins only in the context of God's love. The art of love is inextricably linked with the art of admitting a mistake if you have hurt someone and the art of saying, I'm sorry, I apologize. This is Himalayas in love, but very, very important. Actually, to forgive, to say sorry, it's something that makes love stronger, deeper, more precious. It's not an easy task, but the story of Gary Leon Ridgway, 
also known as the Green River Killer, went round the world back in the day. He was one of the most derenegated serial killers in America, in American history. He worked as a carpenter and had a loving wife. No one expected he would kill at least 49 women in Seattle and its suburbs. He was sentenced to 50 life sentences in exchange for his cooperation in, in the investigation. The courtroom was attended by the close one of the victims. They made various comments like, he's an animal. I wished he died slow and painful death. He will go to hell, that's where he belongs. But there was one comment that was completely different. Robert Rule, the father of one of the victims, said to the murderer, Mr. Ridgway, there are people here who hate you. I am not one of them. You have made it difficult for me to live up to what I believe God asks us to do, which is to forgive. I forgive you. The face of the killer up to that moment was like a stone, but now his face changed, and for the first time, tears went on his cheeks. To forgive, to say sorry, it's one of the most difficult things in love. But this is what makes love stronger. And my heart teaches to love. So the liturgy has two main parts. One is the liturgy of the word, and the other is the liturgy of the Eucharist. So conversation or liturgy of the word. The liturgy of the word is the next part of the Eucharist. The Holy Mass, therefore, is not being silent for half an hour and then preparing for the Eucharist liturgy. No, first we read, sing, pray loud, answer. When it comes to love, this is where the conversation comes in. Someone once said that conversation will save the world. So conversation in relationships, in marriages, in friendships, in lives of ours is very important. Because through conversation, you allow other person to get to know you, to get to understand you. And this is what most important because your behavior then can be adjust to the knowledge that you gain from that person and about that person. Conversation is a real art. Conversation can save relationship. Not always and not every relationship, yes, but it is a real art. And we have to learn how to make conversations with people. When to listen, when to say, and to put question. When to be silent, and when to invite somebody to make conversation. This is also a very important element of love, an art of love. Conversation allows us to get to know each other, exchange our experiences. It allows us to fall in love more and more because we discover each other more and more. This is very important in our relationships and I have the note, the letter that 
one lady left for his husband. When my husband came back home, he found a letter on the table. Letter from his wife. She wrote to him. If you are reading this letter, it means that the operation hasn't been successful. I am dead and I am not with you anymore. I won't help you to go through this difficult time, but I know you can do it. You will make it. I want you to know that you, you, gave me a great life. And I am so grateful for that. She had written these words just before the operation. The woman had died happy. Conversation, even through letters and in difficult situations. This is it. That's the direction. Let's talk. Let's spend time using words. If we don't feel like talking, we can read together. We can even sometimes send letters to ourselves. Silence, of course, is an element of conversation as well. Conversation is part of our daily life. It allows us to say not only things like can you buy a whole meal bread and some brown rice on your way, way back? <laughs> but most of all, you've done such a great job today. Thank you. So conversation can be learned as well. And it should be learned. Every day until death. blood or liturgy of the Eucharist. If you really want to love, then, unfortunately, you have to say it aloud. There will be blood. How to recognize a true love? You can often hear that question asked in movies, in the media, and in life. It's easy to recognize love. It's the blood. Love knows the taste of blood. It knows what it means to sacrifice your life for someone else. When I love, my hands, my legs, my head, and my heart will bleed. Cardinal Stefan Wyszynski, the Polish, prim Polish primate and a friend of John Paul II, used to say, every great love has its Good Friday. Every great love has its Good Friday. Good Friday. So when you, you are in relationship and you notice the first small drop of blood, don't panic. And don't run away. Don't give up so easily. This is the part of the Eucharist when you should ask Jesus. Jesus, you are love. I bring you my little love. My love experience my love talents, but also my weaknesses, my lack of forgiveness, my jealousy, my distrust, my loneliness, my anger. I am afraid of blood, but I cry out to you and ask you, teach me how to love. I want to love the way you do. I want to love to be internal, exceptional, just like yours. The love that can endure difficulties. Holy Communion. This is the part of the Eucharist 
when we especially look up to Christ and what's more, we take his body and blood, him as a whole. and allow him to love through us. This is not only our effort to love. This is Jesus who wants to love through us. He's inviting us, taking us, and he's loving through us. So the main thing is to allow Jesus to love through us. This is the part of the Eucharist when we especially look up to Christ. Holy Communion is the most important moment during the Mass, the most intimate one, the Himalayas. We are taking Jesus in ourselves and we are asking Him. This is the deepest call to Jesus, love through me. That's the meaning of Holy Communion. Love through me. So in the world will be more love than hate, will be more you than evil. Nobody has access to you then. There's only you and Christ. At that moment, he takes up his residence in you with his love. Love takes up its residence in you. And slowly you will become more and more patient, more and more forgiving, more and more devoted, more and more giving, be better at love, to bear the cross of getting up at night to take care of your child, the cross of forgiveness, the cross of forgetting the wounds and distress, the cross of 30 years of making the same person their favorite sandwich, the cross of giving them warmth and attention when you are tired yourself or even angry at them, the cross of love, that is difficult to understand. Until finally, you will see that you have succeeded. You will pass the test of love. You will master the art of love. Because the Eucharist is not something that lasts 45 minutes or an hour. At the end, the priest says the following words, go in the peace of Christ to love and serve the Lord in your life, in your relationship. That's why we are coming to the Eucharist, not just to be here for an hour, but to go out receiving Jesus and his love, go out to love and serve the Lord. So make the whole world the Eucharist. Go and take the Eucharist with you to your homes, your relationships, into the world. Feed another person with love in Christ, whether it's a friend or an enemy. Follow Jesus' example. This is the actual art of love. But it's a difficult one. But this is not only our job. We are having Jesus in us, his words and his body and blood, so he can love through us. Don't give up on it though. Never give up on love, never. This is what is taking us out of our life deserts. Keep coming here. Keep learning from Jesus at the Eucharist what love means and how to love. Don't give up on the most perfect school of love, the Eucharist. And always, when you come here, search for love you can improve in your life 
what you can take from this particular Eucharist to put into your life, into your love. What are you taking today, on next Sunday? What are you taking for this particular Eucharist to your tiniest thing? What do you need today? What do you need this week? Don't give up on the most perfect school of love, the Eucharist. Amen. Amen. When I was talking with the, with the, with Father Andy and Father Greg, and with some parishioners. Um, maybe there could be a time of, for questions, maybe we can have um, huh? okay he's going to get a mic if just in case if somebody would like to ask a question if you have any questions or um, questions that you would like to ask uh, here tonight, then we'll have some time for that. Mm. Try to make it clear and simple, so we will search for the simple and clear answer. And at the end I put the, the slide with, with the symbol of love. You see small hearts incorporated into cross. There is no love without sacrifice. There's no love without cross. So, if there is a... <laughs> this, this is not a question. <laughs> this is a, a couple of comments. What has helped me well, I'll be 89 this year, praise God. But um, what has helped me a lot in life is that I have learned that love is sacrifice. And that has helped me to reach here. Also, I love St. Augustine. And his words that I think of all the time when I am preparing to receive Jesus in communion, his words are lovely. Ave corpo vero, nato in Maria, Virgin. In English, hail true body, born of the Virgin Mary, that lives with me. Thank you. And you, you, you emphasized it in the Eucharist. Thank you. Thank you very much for your comments. And this is another thing we can make comments as well or share from our own experiences what struck us during this, um, this um, talk. And thank you very much for, for sharing it with us. And we are. Thank you for thanking <laughs> Yeah, it's very, very important. St. Augustine said in this uh, theme as well that love and do whatever you want. But first love, love, love that comes from Jesus. And then you can be safe doing anything you want. Yeah, that's St. Augustine as well. Yeah. I will, at the end, I will recite then the, the prayer with I begin our talk. And then I will uh, allow Father Andrew to speak, but then we will finish with this prayer. Lord, walk a mile in my shoes. Come in, Lord. Please teach me how to love. Teach me how to feed others. Give them shelter. Give them my presence. Make me healthy food for others. Jesus, Come into my stiff, motionless, dead, and paralyzed life, into my deserts. You are the only one who has the power to
to restore my life, to revive my life and revive my faith with the deeds of love, with the art of love. Amen. Thank you very much for tonight. Thank you for coming. Yeah. I must admit that I really, if I, I can use the word enjoy, but also in a spiritual sense, I enjoy being here with you and sharing the uh, word of God. Thank you very much. Yeah, the blessing, final blessing for tonight. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Tonight, love, tomorrow, prayer. <laughs>